WCBI News at 10 starts now. Alouse County home is a total loss tonight after a fire. Thanks for staying up with us. The fire happened just before 6 o'clock at a home on Sand Road. You can see here fire crews working to knock out the smoke and flames. Lowndes County Fire Coordinator Neil Austin says that a father and son lived in the home and they were doing some remodeling work to it. Austin says that the fire is being ruled as accidental. The good news is no one was injured. A wreck involving an 18 wheeler in Columbus temporarily shuts down one lane of traffic on Highway 82. Witnesses say that the trucker was heading eastbound on the highway when a steel load came off the tractor. Shortly after the truck turned over, as you see there, Columbus Police and Fire Department responded to the scene. The driver involved was taken to Baptist Hospital by ambulance. No word on, his on the driver's condition. That accident is still under investigation. Well, the weather may make things a little treacherous out there tonight. You're probably going to see some rain, and in some areas, things could get a little stormy. For the very latest on what we can expect, we turn things over to Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. Hey, Keith. Hey, Scott. Right now, we do have a lot of rain across our region right now. No watches, no warnings for our coverage area. This is our Up Insurance Camera Network. Notice the rain here in Columbus and Louisville and Vernon and Tupelo as well. We have some Raindrops on the camera lens. We have some widespread showers here. A little bit of embedded lightning at times, but the strongest storms south of Jackson, down towards Crystal Springs and southwest of Natchez. These storms are big. Hail producers rotating down here. A tornado producer uh, has been moving across Louisiana this evening. Now, the worst of the weather looks like it's going to stay just to our south again because we're pretty stable. Temperatures in the 50s right now, but there still could be some gusty breezes here and some heavy downpours later tonight. So we're going to be babysitting radar all night long here just to be on the safe side as these storms move on through. Notice what we will have move on through some rain with some embedded lightning and thunder during the overnight hours. I think the heaviest rain should be done by seven o'clock in the morning. We'll have a chance for a shower storm during the day tomorrow. It's going to be breezy slash windy. Maybe some wind gusts over 30 and it will be warmer too, mid to upper 70s. Your full forecast coming up. Governor Tate Reeves says that it is not likely that he'll extend the shelter in place order in its entirety. Instead, expect more restrictions to be loosened in a similar way to what we've seen this week with the extension. Courtney and Jackson explains. Governor Reeves doesn't have a one size fits all answer for what reopening the state's economy will look like. We have talked about the potential of uh, an, a regional approach. For instance, or a county by county approach. Um, we are also looking at industries and, and, and making decisions on those industries that can quickly get back to work and do so in a safe way. There's growing confidence in the capacity of the health care system and supply of personal protective equipment, both of which are part of the considerations. We're not going to be complacent, but I think a lot of indicators strongly support looking at modest measured, thoughtful mechanisms to move toward normalcy. Here's what we do know. Life won't bounce back to normal anytime soon. We're slower than most, intentionally so, and I would argue correctly so, in putting the shelter-in-place order in effect. Now, we took measures throughout that process, which eased us into it, and what I think you will see over the next two to three to four weeks is measures that incrementally get us out of it. Take restaurants, for example. Reeves noted Tuesday that they'll likely be looking at options such as fewer people inside the restaurant or removing every other table. The Mississippi Hospitality and Restaurant Association says their members are still weighing what makes the most sense financially. Many operators uh, have already stated that uh, they will not entertain dine-in until all restrictions are lifted. Uh, simply not cost effective. No decision has been made about those next steps yet, but the governor says there will be a look at each industry's risk and ability to get back to work. Courtney Ann Jackson, WCBI News. Closer to home, small businesses across the nation are facing an unprecedented economic disruption from the coronavirus outbreak. Many owners are applying for loans to make it through these hard times. Chris Tippleton is the director at the Small Business Development Center at MSU. He says there are two different loans businesses can apply for, the Paycheck Protection Plan and the Economic Injury Disaster Loan. 
I have canceled probably about 35 different businesses in the last several weeks. And a lot of those are pretty extensive conversations. So that's a large amount. It's just it's at record levels for us in a short period of time. The main thing you want to do is keep yourself going um, and be realistic to know, you know when you should decide that you don't need to be in business anymore. If you'd like to seek counseling from the Small Business Development Center at MSU, just visit our website, WCBI.com. Tonight, the U.N. is warning that the pandemic is putting the world at risk of widespread famines of, quote, biblical proportions. There are growing concerns about food supplies in this country, especially in America's meat industry. An explosion of coronavirus cases is forcing some meat packing plants to shut down. More now from CBS's Janet Shamlin. A major pork processing plant is the latest to close. Tyson Foods in Waterloo, Iowa, where 2,800 workers process nearly 20,000 hogs a day. It comes after an outbreak of at least 180 COVID-19 cases there and after Iowa lawmakers filed an OSHA complaint, even though the state's governor resisted. We can work with different uh, processing facilities across the state to keep the processing plants up and going. A USA Today investigation found 150 of the nation's largest plants are in counties where the infection rate is spiking, threatening not only workers, but potentially the food supply. Any plant or factory across the country could become the number one hotspot next week uh, if they do not take this issue seriously. Processing plants can be a breeding ground for the virus because many workers spend their day side by side. This man, who recovered from COVID-19 and asked we not use his name, works at Smithfield Foods in South Dakota. We are very close. We can use a social distance at that place. Tonight, there is increasing concern about the supply of meat and poultry. The Agriculture Department reports beef production is already down 19 percent from a year ago. Are we going to be going through a meat shortage in the United States? You know, you may not get the exact product that you want when you go to the store, but we do not expect, I would not expect uh, a protein shortage. And Tyson has now announced it is closing yet another of its plants, this time in Indiana. Here in Texas, public health officials are investigating outbreaks at two rural processing plants where resources and hospitals are thin. Janet Shanley and CBS News, Houston. Here at home, the latest numbers from the Mississippi State Health Department of Health show Monroe County with 99 confirmed cases of coronavirus and nine deaths. Those are among the highest numbers in our viewing area. Our Allie Martin has more from Monroe County. With a statewide shelter in place order and other mandates limiting the size of public gatherings, enforcement falls to police or sheriff's departments. Monroe County Sheriff Kevin Crook says his deputies are doing the best they can to keep the public safe and also dealing with new issues because of the coronavirus. Traffic went down for, you know, a week or two there at the beginning, but it's been it's been yeah. pretty much normal here for the last two or three weeks. The sheriff is concerned about the high number of cases in Monroe County, and that concern runs throughout the community. Shelly Bowen owns the Blue Owl, a gift and home decor store in downtown Aberdeen. She also lives in Monroe County and says the higher than expected COVID-19 cases are very troubling. Everyone I know is trying to stay at home and not get out as much and just do what we're supposed to be doing. But I know there are some that, you know, aren't taking it as serious as others maybe. The sheriff recently took to Facebook encouraging people to follow CDC guidelines and he also asked the public to let his office know if someone with the coronavirus was not practicing self-quarantine. Still, there is limited information for his deputies. So we're really just going on, you know, their word. Uh, hopefully they're honest with us uh, if they've got it or not. If they do, of course, we would offer to, to uh, escort them back to their home wherever they're supposed to be quarantined and if they fail to comply with that then, then they would be failure to comply with a lawful order and uh, we would bring them here and house them. The sheriff is hopeful that even after the statewide shelter in place order is lifted, folks in Monroe County will be vigilant, cautious and use common sense. In Aberdeen, Allie Martin, WCBI News. The sheriff says he has not had to arrest anyone with COVID-19. 
for refusing to self-isolate. The University of Mississippi Medical Center and the State Department of Health will have two local sites for COVID-19 testing. On Friday, April 24th, they will be set up at the Oxford Conference Center. A second one-day testing site will be Saturday, April 25th at Fairview Baptist Church here in Columbus. Now, pre-screening is required. The fastest way to get screened is through the C Spire Health app, or you can call the number 601-496-7200. All right, we're going to send things back over to Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. Keith, it's already raining just a little bit, I think, out here in Columbus. You know what? It's not raining cats and dogs just yet. Not yet. <laughs> but we do have a dog here with our first alert forecast. <laughs> this is Nikki. What a cutie. We love Nikki. A uh, chance for a shower storm tomorrow. Warmer, 78 degrees. More evening storms possible Friday. The weekend, though, is looking okay. We'll show you that some of the forecasts next. Your WCBI first alert AccuWeather forecast with Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. Late April tends to be quite busy around here. That is the case again this year. We have several more rounds of storms tonight. The main threats look to be rain, which we already have, and some gusty breezes. Maybe some stronger wind later on tonight. Tomorrow, some storms, especially right along the Alabama-Mississippi border around midday and then points east after that. We'll be watching that. Most of the strong activity tomorrow will be to our east, if not all of it. Maybe a few isolated hailstorms on Friday evening. As we get into next week, Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, another cold front with more rain and storms. Now, let's concentrate on right now. We have a flash flood watch for most of the area, anywhere from about a half inch to maybe over three inches of rain. This model not really showing as much as what we had been showing, but we saw the chance for several inches of rain tonight. Already some steady rain for you in Grenada, Bruce, Houston, also down towards the Golden Triangle area. A little bit of a break, but uh, this is a wave moving on through. More likely will come on in. Stronger storm cells south of Jackson, southwest of Natchez. That is a nasty rotating storm with a history of tornadoes. And still some additional storm cells out there in northern Louisiana. And all of this is moving to the northeast. Now, we're pretty stable right now. Temperature-wise, we are in the 50s to low 60s. So I think the worst of the weather in general, the tornado threat will stay to our south. But you can see from Jackson down into Louisiana, a tornado watch until 5 o'clock in the morning. We'll watch this activity down to our southwest. Also here in the Arkansas, this is all generally coming our way. But gusty wind and rain, the primary threat, it would appear, as we go throughout the course of the night. Trevor is already here. Vanessa will be in shortly. We'll be monitoring things all night long. That is Oklahoma. Notice the funnel cloud right here, that tornado. A lot of tornadoes across parts of the country today. We have the rain. We have the strongest storms likely staying to our south tonight, but we will watch it. We're going to be right on the edge. We're stable, but there's very unstable air down to the south. So tonight, we're about 57. This is about where we hover for the next few hours. Breezy. Breezy winds develop and uh, some rain now, maybe some storms, maybe some gusty storms later on tonight. Tomorrow, a chance for some showers and storms by midday. Notice how we warm up into the mid to upper 70s here with a west wind about 10 to 25 with some higher gusts. So much warmer overall tomorrow. And we mentioned by midday, there may start to see, we may start to see some budding storm cells run along the state line and then those will move to the east. So wherever those develop and points east, that's where the strongest weather is going to be tomorrow. We may have some wraparound showers here and some clouds, but uh, we'll just see what happens here to our east tomorrow. There's likely going to be much stronger activity to our east on Thursday relative to what we're going to have here. So if we're lucky, we'll miss out on the rough stuff tonight and tomorrow. It's always good news in April if we can dodge the severe weather, but we'll follow it here. Another chance of rain and storms there Friday night. This is your AccuWeather 70 forecast. A few early showers possible Saturday. Most of Saturday afternoon is looking great. Sunday and Monday, fantastic here before more wet weather by Tuesday. Fans of a Tupelo culinary favorite will have a chance to make history this year. For the first time ever, you will be able to get a duties burger in a drive through COVID-19 precautions have forced Tupelo's Orin Dunn City Museum to cancel this year's duties burger festival. But they're still cooking up something special. Saturday, May 9th, the museum is hosting the Duties Burgers Drive By. The staff is taking pre orders for the special meals. For eight bucks, you can get two Duties Burgers, chips, a moon pie, candy, and a drink. Between 10 30 a.m. and 1 30 p.m., you can drive in and pick them up. You can call the Orin Dunn Museum to get information on how to order. You don't have to pre order, but if you wait until the day of, the cost will go up to $10.
The Duties Burger Festival is the museum's biggest fundraiser of the year. Also, COVID-19 precautions are also changing the Tupelo's Elvis Fest. It's going virtual. Event organizers announced today that due to COVID-19, all public events are canceled. Instead, attendees can visit Tupelo virtually each day of the fest by visiting the event's website. The event will be June 3rd through 7th. A schedule is expected in the upcoming weeks. Well, trees are leafing out, flowers are in bloom. Spring is a beautiful time of year unless you have allergies. We found out more about the sneezing and wheezing of the season when we come back. You're watching WCBI News at 10 with Scott Martin. Welcome back, everyone. If you're sniffing or sneezing, it could be those spring allergies. We learned more about some of the triggers in our Health Talk with Baptist. What is the cause of most spring allergies? The biggest spring allergy trigger is pollen, tiny grains released into the air by trees, grasses, and weeds for the purpose of fertilizing other plants. When pollen grains get into the nose of someone who's allergic, they send the immune system into overdrive. As the trees start to bloom and the pollen is released into the atmosphere, allergy sufferers begin their annual ritual of sniffing and sneezing. Each year, 58 million Americans fall prey to seasonal allergic rhinitis, more commonly known as hay fever. Pollen can travel for miles, spreading a path of misery for allergy sufferers along the way. The higher the pollen count, the greater the misery. The pollen count measures the amount of allergens in the air in grains per cubic meter. You can find out the daily pollen count in your area by watching your local weather forecast. Here are some of the biggest spring allergy offenders. Trees including oak, pine, willow, elm, hickory, and cedar. Grasses and weeds including Bermuda, fescue, Johnson, perennial rye, timothy, and ragweed. Allergy symptoms tend to be particularly high on breezy days when the wind picks up pollen and carries it through the air. Rainy days, on the other hand, cause a drop in the pollen counts because the rain washes away the allergens. Join us next time on Health Talk with Baptist and we'll discuss some of the treatments of spring allergies. Mail your topic suggestions to Health Talk at WCBI.com. Health Talk has been brought to you by Baptist Memorial Hospital Golden Triangle. Believe it or not, there is an upside to sheltering at home and self-quarantining. It's making things better for your mother, Mother Earth, that is. We'll explain after the break. Today marks the 50th anniversary of Earth Day, and this year's theme is climate action. And as Nancy Chen reports, climate experts say those stay-at-home orders across the country are having a positive effect on the environment. With half the world's population staying at home, these cloudy days are bringing clearer skies. This is wonderful. Places like New York, Los Angeles, Denver, all cities around the world are seeing the best air quality they've seen in a long, long time. The 50th anniversary of Earth Day comes as global carbon dioxide emissions are expected to fall to their lowest level since World War II. Water is clearer in many areas and animal sightings are up. Even rare wildflowers and a declining bee population could benefit as roadside fields aren't cleared as often. We've probably got about, uh, I should think, probably three, three weeks worth of growth that often we wouldn't have had already. And this is such an exciting time of year, Nancy, because now in Britain, you know, all these plants are gearing up with loads of energy to start flowering. Organizers say more than a billion people typically participate in Earth Day activities. And this year, there are plenty of ways to celebrate the outdoors from inside. EarthDay.org has an interactive map with virtual events all over the country and the world, from teach-ins to film screenings. And while large-scale cleanups won't be happening, there are lots of practical things you can do from your home. Consider a no plastic buy challenge, starting with one item. Reduce meat and dairy consumption. Cut back on water use. Start a backyard compost pile. Build a birdhouse or feeder. Or make crafts with recycled items. Climate watchers also say to brainstorm about the future. Think about what you can do once we emerge from this crisis to help the environment. Activists say every little bit really does help. Nancy Chen, CBS News, New York. We'll have a last look at your forecast when we come back. We're still tracking some rain around here. Bigger storm south and west of Jackson, also in Louisiana. Those are severe rotating storms, big time storms. But I think for the worst, or I think the worst of the weather is probably going to be to our south here tonight. But we're watching for some gusty wind, some heavy rainfall later on tonight. 
So Trevor is already in house. Vanessa is going to come on in. We're going to have everybody updated as we go throughout the course of the night, just in case things get out of hand. But uh, suffice to say, it's April. It's April. All right. Thanks so much, Katie. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow.